be in the house of God in the presence of the Lord among the people of God. Amen. Let's start out by prayer. Just ask the Lord to touch our very hearts and minds as He wants to do. Let's ask Him. Jesus, we call on You, God. We love You tonight, Lord. We've come here to gather, Lord, to worship You, to hear Your Word, God, hide it in our hearts. Once again, Jesus, we ask, Lord, for your anointing to come in, God, your presence to come in, Jesus, Lord. God, we praise you alone tonight, Jesus. God, and we glorify you, God, in this house, Lord. We give you praise, God. We are blessed, Jesus, Lord, because of you, God. We give you the praise and honor tonight, Jesus, and thank you for the goodness of the Lord and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. in my mind, just up on the riverbank, just resting our, rest our bodies, resting our feet, but I'm not quite sure it's going to look like that, but I think about that rest, and I'm so thankful for the cross of Calvary that one of these days we can look forward to that, the rest beyond the river, I'm so thankful.
thankful for the cross. Praise God. Amen. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer right now. Let's continue to remember we've got a few requests. Sister Robin tonight needs our prayers. My sister Bagley as well. Amen. Let's remember Brother Mark Tires going in for surgery on the 8th of July. And let's remember him in prayer. Let's remember Sister Debbie Benedict for healing and strength. She's still not well. And let's continue to remember um, each and every need tonight. Let's remember Brother Kelly. Amen. The Adams family tonight needs our prayers. Continue to remember them. Brother Brett, you have a need tonight. All right. Remember that trip. Amen. God, keep his hand upon you. Bless you. Amen. 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 God's good to us. Amen. He has the answer to our needs. Amen. If you have a need tonight, amen. Sister Debbie Benedict. Sister Debbie Benedict tonight. Amen. Amen. Remember her in prayer Sister for healing. Sister Bagley. Sister Bagley as well. Amen. Let's remember her. Sister Robin. Amen. Sister Robin tonight. Amen. Amen. If we have a need tonight with the uplifted hand all over the house, remember Sister Chris Barkers too. Remember her in prayer. Amen. That God will just send strength in their families. Sister, amen. Let's remember Aunt Carolyn as well for her family. Amen. Let's call on the name of Jesus together. Let's talk to the Lord. Jesus, we love you tonight, Lord. God, we call on your name over this house, Jesus. Trusting in you, God, believing in you, Jesus, for great things, Lord. God, you are the miracle worker tonight, Jesus. You are still the way maker, God, in our lives. God, every need tonight, Jesus, no matter how small or great, God, you're the answer, Jesus. God, we pray right now that you would touch, Lord. Send healing, Lord, Sister Debbie, tonight, God. And Sister Robin, in Jesus' name, Sister Bagley, tonight, God, that you would move on these situations, Sister Tammy Williams, tonight, Jesus. Lord, you would touch tonight, God. Send the strength that we need, God. Brother Kelly tonight needs strength for his body, Jesus. Touch the Adams family, Lord, as well. God, I pray that you would move among us, Lord. Touch, Lord, our families, God. Touch the unsaved tonight, Jesus. Touch those that have walked away. Oh, God, would you move tonight, Lord? God, would you touch Jesus, Lord? God, would you move, God, in our homes, Lord, beyond these walls tonight, Jesus? In your name, oh, Lord, the name of Jesus, Lord, touch every life tonight, God. Those who've been praying for, those who've been diligent about, God, I pray that you would touch them once again, God, that you'd minister to their need tonight, God. That's Brother Brett, Lord, as he goes away, God, that you would keep your hand upon him and bless him, Jesus. In your name tonight, God, we believe you for greater things, God. Can you send a revival among us, O oh Lord, in our souls and hearts, O oh God? Can you speak to us, O oh Lord? We praise you tonight, God. We thank you, God, for what you're doing, God. Continue to move in this world, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we praise you tonight, God. We thank you, God, and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I'm going to ask the ushers to usher to come. Amen. Receive the offering. Amen. Praise God. Continue to remember church Sunday morning. Praise God. Continue to invite. Amen. And be the light of the world. Praise God. Amen. Jesus is still coming soon. Amen. He's got a place prepared for us. He said if he would go away, he'd prepare a place for us. Where he is, there we may be also. Amen. How many want to go? Amen. I want to go. I want to go. Amen. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. Praise God. To 
Let's ask the Lord's blessing. Jesus, we thank you tonight, Lord, to be in your house, God, in your presence. God, we ask you to bless this offering. God, multiply it, Lord, for the kingdom, Jesus, for the work you have for us, Lord. God, we're going to praise you through it all. Give you the glory tonight, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give unto the Lord so tonight. let me walk with you, Jesus. Don't end. For without you, I could never. praise you tonight. We thank you, Jesus, for all of your goodness, your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I got up here without a microphone. So, I'm going to teach right here for a minute. <laughs> praise the Lord. Can somebody get me a microphone? Please. How silly is that? That's like walk, walking off without your sword. Hello? Well, how many staying cool? Well, Shane staying cool, sister. Praise the Lord. There we go. We got one. Hallelujah. Well, let's, we're going to take our Bibles tonight, and we're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Good to have you all here tonight, and uh, so thankful for all the Lord is doing. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to read verse 1. So just so that everyone's on the same page, it's coming Sunday. We've not really been able to have Sunday school because of the, this pandemic and all of this stuff. Uh, but this coming Sunday, uh, what the plan is to have the children in during worship and then they'll go out. Of course, we've got to do temperature and all of that to make sure everybody's okay, which I'm sure that they will be. But we will do that. And uh, Sister Peggy will have her class, the small ones together, and then the the older class will be going up and they will be, I don't know, they'll be having a, a children's service is what they will be doing. And so they'll have to wash their hands as well. So uh, we'll have that for our first time this coming Sunday. So if you have any friends that have children, let them know that uh, we are, will be doing that. The uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up. That is on the 13th of July. Can you believe it? We're already in July. I, I feel like I missed several months. I guess we did. Uh, not quite a Rip Van Winkle, but... I think he lost about 20 years, but I don't want to lose 20 years. I, I winked, and it seems like 20 years, but amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this, and uh, let me say one more thing. This is the 4th of July weekend, and so there will be no service on Sunday night. Okay, so you can wear your patriotic on Sunday morning if you would like, and we'll come and have a great time. Sister Henderson? Come here and talk in this microphone, dear. I know you don't like microphones. We're going to 
be handing out prepackaged snacks because, you know, we don't want to touch everything for VBS. And so instead of having a list of what all we need, if anybody would like to donate and just put VBS on your envelope, then that's what that will go towards. Amen. And Brother Clyde was out trying to get some donations, and it seems that people have changed their, their protocols. You have to have about four weeks before we can, uh, people will give uh, to things like this. So that's okay. God will make a way. And uh, we're just thankful for uh, the effort, and I know that God will help us. And uh, the Merrimans will be with us, and uh, they will be up in the Harrison Hills Church, the, actually the week before, and then coming with us. Uh, then, so we're so thankful for that. Let's read in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 1, and let's all read together, okay? The Bible says, now faith, let's all say it together, ready? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Praise God. And you may be seated. So uh, we talked, we've been talking about grace and faith and how it works. We've already identified faith as a man's positive response. And I preached on this Sunday morning uh, to a degree to God and the means by which man accepts God's saving grace. And what a powerful grace that it is to have in his li in our lives. Amen. And it's the means by which we yield to the Holy Ghost. We allow God and His Word to come into us. And so what that means is as we read God's Word and we come against or come into something and we read things, uh, we want to incorporate those things in our lives. And uh, that's, that's really what faith is and us allowing Him to perform His saving work in us. And so those things are, are very, very deep to us. And uh, a lot of people have tried to uh, identify what faith is. And so uh, faith is, uh, it's, it's, and we're going to look at just a few of those, but it, it ex this accurately states the function of faith, okay? And really, that's what we're looking for is the function of faith. I'll, I'll get it out here in a minute. But we're going to try to find more precisely. It is a belief, a belief. Everybody say belief. It's a belief as of a state of habit of mind in which trust or confidence is placed in some person or thing. And so when we express our faith in, in Christian, in the Christian realms and in the Bible, we're expressing our, our absolute belief in the Lord Jesus Christ and more importantly in this word. There are, there are blessings and there is power that's released when we obey this word. Amen. There is power that is released when we obey this word. If we read something and we say, no, thank you, we reject it, then there is, it inhibits the flow of God's power in our life. Okay, and so when we think about faith, it is that allegiance or that duty to God, that loyalty, that belief and trust in him that. And let me go a little bit deeper here in this, because I don't want to use the word faith to describe that we have, say, faith in God, but we have a loyalty to God. And, you know, God is loyal to us. When we express strong belief, and, and what I mean by that is that when something comes your way and you really don't know what the answer is, and yet you express and say, well, I believe that God, I found a verse in the Bible, and God said this, and so I am going to stand on this, that is faith. That is deep faith, okay? And it is, it is more than just loyalty, but it is accompanied then with a strong conviction, a strong conviction. And what that means is that I have to do this. There is a moral obligation. There is something on the inside that is compelling. Everybody say compelling. 
It's compelling me to live for God. Amen. And to follow him. Think about this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into a fiery furnace. Why? It would have been really easy for them to have just uh, said, well, you know what? The fire's pretty hot up there. I think I'll just pass today. And But no, there was a, a very deep-held conviction that if they didn't follow God into the furnace that he would forsake them in other realms of their life. In other words, this is the way that God was leading. Now, sometimes that might seem uh, strange to us, but, but think, about, think about the children of Israel when they were well, battling the Philistines, for instance. You had a, a huge army on both sides. One side did not have God on their side. The other side did, and that was, that was a, an accepted thing that that God's people were anointed by the Lord, but there's something that, that happened that was here. An entire army was thwarted and was basically uh, put, I, I don't, put on ice, if you want to put it that way, because somebody would not follow God to the point and through what God wanted to take them through. Now, uh, but here comes David. You know, the, the, the young man that shows up from the backside of the wilderness, he's out and he's just guarding sheep. And so here comes a shepherd, he's not trained in the art of war. He's not trained to know even to know how to use armor because armor, when, when no one knows how to wield it, it can be used as a weapon. Has anybody ever been backhanded by your mom or your dad? I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore, so be careful what you say. But, but, you know, there's something about the back of this hand. This is pretty hard. Or if you've ever gone into mixed martial arts or anything like that, I'm, I'm not that. But, but, you know, that foot, the, 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 the front of that foot, and that, that, there's some real heavy bones that are right there. If you get knocked upside the head with one of those, or the heel, if somebody gets you on a back, you know, one of those back spins, uh, it, it will actually it will knock your teeth out. It will... It will cause you to go to tomorrow, today, when you really don't want to. And so when we think about this, this entire army was thwarted. And so here comes a shepherd boy that's not used to armor. They tried to put it on him. He wasn't, it wasn't the weapons of his warfare. It might have been the weapons of somebody else's warfare, but it wasn't his. It wasn't the path that God wanted him to do. Uh, they tried to do lots of different things with him, and, and finally they allowed him to go out. Now, I think that it is really a, a shame that, that a young boy had to go out and to fight uh, for the armies of God. But I'll tell you, when nobody else will stand up, God will send a deliverer. There will be somebody that will come along that will have the faith and that will believe and that will have a conviction that says, you know, I've got to do this. This isn't just if I die, I die. If if this doesn't go the way, you know what? God will raise somebody else up. Think think about that, you know, and Saul in all that he was. He did not follow God. He was following his own path. He was following what it made sense to his mind. But we've got to follow God where he leads us. In Moses' case, it was, be, it was following into a Red Sea. In Joseph's case, it was being led, amen, through so many torturous trials that he went through, being sold into slavery, then being ridiculed and accused of trying to rape his master's wife. Then, then he went into the dungeon and he was forgotten. And there's all of those things that deal with, with the human, human mind and our spirit and even our, what we're talking about tonight, our faith, our loyalty, our belief, our conviction. But there was something about Joseph that Joseph understood he had to follow this. This was not just a, well, I think that th it'll be worth it. There was none of that. It was, I've got to follow whether it's worth it or not. Whether the outcome is what would look good on this side, 
and, and to the flesh, it's got to be something deeper than that. And so I will tell you this, that the promises of God are yea and they are, are amen, and that you can never outgive God and that no man will ever owe God and that God always makes a way. I will tell you that, but that's not how we follow him. We follow him to the death. We follow him as though that is what it really means, praise God, to lay it all, to give it all on the altar. Now, we talked about Abraham a few weeks ago. Maybe it's been a month or so ago now. And that, and that God asked him to not just give of what he had, but to give of his own son. Now, when you think about that, it's one thing to give your own life, but what about your family's life? Brother Shane, which one of your three children are you ready to you know, sacrifice, and I don't think, Sister Angie, which you, you can't pick, right? And so that's, and especially when you only have one, what do you do? You, we trust God. We believe God. That God. We trust and know that God is leading us through this situation and that He will make a way. Amen. And so, Joseph, we know the stories, the ends of these stories. David defeated Goliath, picked up his head. And I, I heard someone was preaching about that and, and said that, you know, when he came back, he didn't. There was one thing that uh, David grabbed. That was the head of Saul. And when he brought it back, he, he held on to that and to the point to where the Bible says that his hand claved to it, you know, and it was something that when he came back in and, and they were looking at him, here he is, this young boy. And he's now got, he's got the head of, of Goliath in his hands. And someone said that, why did he hang on to it? The reason he hang on to, hung on to it was because now he had the thinking of the enemy. This is how the enemy thinks. You want to know how the enemy thinks? This is how he thinks. You know, the enemy comes against us with all kinds of things to intimidate us, to knock us off of our journey and our trip of faith. And I know, I understand, I have faced things in my life. We've all faced things in our lives. But God is looking for that, for that loyalty, that, that unwavering. And, and I know these are hard words because, yeah, we do waver sometimes. We, we look at the trouble and it's like Jesus even said it in the garden, right? He said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Do you know what it means, though? It wasn't possible. For him to bypass Calvary. It was not possible that the Garden of Gethsemane and all the things that happened to Jesus could, could have been bypassed. It had to happen. David had to, to, to be, defeat uh, Goliath. Joseph had to be sold into slavery. It was part of the plan. It was part of, and you know what? God did not show him that in the beginning. Think about it. Aren't you glad that God doesn't give us complete dreams sometimes? He just gives us part of it. Because there are some parts that we just absolutely may not be able to bear. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't know what it would feel like once they got in the, in the furnace. They, and they didn't know that Jesus would show up. But let me just say here that Jesus will show up. God Almighty will show up. He will not leave us. He will not forsake us. You can hang your hat on that word. Now, when we turn to the Greek language, we find an even greater depth of meaning. Now, I'm not a great uh, person that knows everything about Greek, and I don't know that there's anybody in the world that does. But uh, the, the publisher's forward to the Amplified Bible, if you've ever used it, it contains a significant discussion of the word believe. Believe. As it, as it points out, most people believe in Christ in the ordinary English meaning of the word. And that is, most people believe that Christ lived, he was a son of God uh, in some sense, and that he died on the cross to save sinners. However, according to the Amplified Version, it says this, that no single English word can truly and adequately convey the intended meaning of this Greek word, pastuo, which most translations render believe. This, this uh, Amplified definition it goes deeper, and it means this. It means to adhere to, trust, to have faith in, to rely on. Consequently, the words believe on the Lord Jesus Christ really mean to have an absolute personal 
reliance. In other words, I might, my body might be breathing air, but that's not what's keeping me alive. My heart might be beating and causing blood to circulate and to pick up nutrients and, and to take it to my, the cells of my body. We've all probably had some sort of biology and understand a little bit of this. And, and it also, the same blood is used then to pick up, well, the byproducts, right? The, the, the bad stuff that delivers it to places like the kidneys and the liver, and then it's expelled through, through those organs. We, we, we know that. But this blood, although we have the blood that, that does these things, here's what I believe. That if you didn't have any blood in your body, you, would still, you could still be, live and be alive if God wants you to be alive. Hello. Because you know, we, too many people put reliance on the things of the flesh and of our body. But, but we've got to get down to where reality states it this way, is that we are relying and we are depending on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior for everything. Now, I appreciate the church. I appreciate this building and, and, and all that it offers, the air conditioning in the summertime, the heat in the winter. But you know what? We don't need this building to be saved. We can still meet. They used to meet in brush arbors. They used to, they used to just clean fields and go and they would, they would try to find some shade. And they would get in there and they would preach the word of God. And some of the, some of the most powerful revivals that are on record have been a result of that. Amen. And, you know, uh, to, to understand what that really means to have an absolute. When you think about absolute, that means nothing else. Nothing, nothing else. I'm relying on God and his word. Now, W.E. Vine, who is one that we depend upon for his expertise uh, in New Testament words and in the Greek words, he also goes into a definition of this word pastuo, which means, which is the word that's used for belief. And he says this, it means to believe also to be, listen to this word, persuaded of. In other words, I am so persuaded. H have you ever been persuaded to buy something? Hey, we're selling, we're selling bridges. <laughs> Anybody want to buy a bridge? We're, we're selling, uh, we're selling uh, ice cubes in Antarctica. Anybody want to come buy? Anybody want to get in on this right on the ground floor level? And you can. Some people are so good that they can sell ice cubes to Eskimos. Um, you know those things are. To be, but to be persuaded of, it means to place confidence in and to trust, and it signifies in the sense of this word reliance upon, but not. Mere credence. In other words, I don't consider the credence or the credentials. You know, sometimes when we, uh, let's just use insurance, for example. If you're going to get insurance, you might shop around to find insurance. And then once you do that, then the little green lizard shows up and says, wow, I could have saved a bunch of money. Or the Allstate guy, you know, with the big, deep voice. Um, but people buy things based upon the credentials. Uh, let's see here. How many, how many drive Hondas exclusively? How many, how many Hondas have you owned? One? Two? One? I can't see. One. I got new glasses, but I can't see. How many drive Chevys? How many you had? One, one, two. I can see you guys are really committed. <laughs> How many of you had? Five? Can't even count. All right. How about Fords? Anybody buy Ford? How many you had, Brother Clyde? Count, count them, Brother Thomas. How many? One. I've had two. Have I had two Ford trucks or three? Three Ford trucks. I've had I've had six Toyotas. Some things you just get service out of. My father was a Ford man between he, before he became a Chevy man. My grandfather was a Chevrolet guy uh, until he got a Ford. Just kidding, but that's the truth. But we we put we look at the credentials. Some people say that 
that Ford stands for found on road dead, or it means fix or repair daily. I don't know what Chevrolet stands for. Do uh, you know they don't even make Pontiacs anymore? Pontiac used to make some of the, the best sports cars that there were. You could buy a Pontiac, was it a Le Mans? You could get it, was it a GTO? A Firebird? You know, but where'd they go? What was that, Brother Andy? Trans Am. That's right. I mean, one of the most popular cars. But what happened? Something happened, right, with their credentials, and people quit buying. But when it comes to the things of God, we have to understand that God has the greatest credentials that there are. But we have to understand that our faith in God is more based more than on just credentials. Okay, now sometimes the our, our King James Bible translates this word as commit or trust, commit or trust. So as you're reading through your Bible and you come to it to where it says commit or trust, it's really talking about believing in God. Now, we've told the story about, uh, you know, breakfast. Faith is uh, the difference between uh, commitment and dedication is like breakfast. The chicken is dedicated, but the pig is committed because it takes a death. OK, so now when we think about this, dig in just a little more. I want to basically it's like, you know, when you catch a fish, you go fishing you don't go out and try and lasso a fish. I mean, you can try. You're probably not going to have much success because they're slippery things, right? And so you throw out a hook with something to eat on it. And, you know, I don't know why we don't ever think about it, but, you know, to get a hook in your mouth, what's that feel like? Anybody ever gotten a hook into yourself when you've been fishing? Oh, Brother Brett, and the rest of you don't want to admit it. Well, I've got hooks in me, too. Uh, gotten torn with them. And uh, I remember my wife's grandfather got one right in the cartilage of his ear. My father-in-law enjoyed getting to take that out, I think. Another time, he got one in his thumb. And he buried it all the way down to the curve with that barb inside of there. And you got to know how to get it out. If you know how to get it out, you push on the eye. You put a piece of fishing line on it so you can pull on it like you're going to pull a tooth. And then you push down on the eye, and then you jerk just as hard as you can. And that it'll allow that barb to come out. Otherwise, you see, there's a barb. There's another hook on the hook that's going the other way to keep it from coming out. You see, real faith. Real faith, when you get a hold of the things of God, it'll grab a hold of you going in, but it'll also grab a hold of you going out. Hello, somebody. I don't know. The word picture might hurt, you know, to think ah, I got this hook in my hand. But, you know, when it comes to the things of God, we want the things of God to hook us. We want to be anchored in the things of God. We want those things to move in our lives and in our, our lifestyle so that, you know, so it's not easy to walk away from the things of God. You know, sometimes the hook going in can be real easy. You know, you give it that tug, but, you know, as you're pulling a fish in, it'll fight you. And it'll, they'll jump up out of water and they'll take their bodies and they'll, they'll do everything they can to pull that hook out because it's something that they don't like. Well, a lot of times, and I've seen it, that there, a lot of times people come in and they, they, it's real easy for them to get the Holy Ghost, Brother Shane. I mean, it's like they come to service and first time here they are. And, 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 and the problem is, is that they don't allow the faith of God to get a hold of them. You know, it's easy to shake the hook. We don't want to shake the hook because this is the thing that's going to save us. In the end, hallelujah, the word, we've got to get a hold of the word, but the word's got to get a hold of us. We've got to allow it to get a hold of us. So the main f and elements in faith in its relation to this invisible God that, was, that we serve, as dis it's as ex distinct, excuse me, distinct from faith in man. So I might have faith, and you might have faith in a man or a person, you know, uh, those of you that are married, you know, you've got a husband and wife, and you depend on them. But has your husband or your wife ever 
let you down. Now, maybe not in a, in a drastic sense, okay? But maybe your husband said that you'd be home by 4.30. And here it is, 4.31. Where are you at? I'm planning on you being here. It used to be we didn't know because these phones, you know, didn't, wasn't attached to our hip like they are now. But, you know, uh, ladies will make plans. They got supper ready. They might have a date. They might be dolled up, curls and smell goods. Jonathan, come up to my, my wife this, this evening and just before he left the house. and I don't know if she hugged him or what, but he looked around and says, Oh, Mimi, you smell good. Ain't nothing like it when, you know, your spouse gets to smelling good for you. Hallelujah. There's something about it. You see, this, this, it's a distinct, not in man, but it's in God. We're putting our hope in him, our trust, a firm condition, uh, conviction, producing a full acknowledgement of God's revelation or truth. In other words, we believe that he is the one true God. You're not going to get me off this path. I believe this with everything that I've got. I believe that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself because we needed a Savior. Hello. We needed a Savior. We needed somebody to deliver us. Praise God. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 and 12. Praise God. It says, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What's a strong delusion? That's a real bad headache. It's a real bad headache and heartache at the same time because they have come to the point to where they don't believe in the things of God. And you know what? When somebody walks away from God, you know what God does? God says, okay, because you see, God will not make anyone live for him. He don't make. This is not a, this is not a prison that we live in. This is a, this is a volunteer. This is a, I'm, I'm looking to God to, to save my life is what I'm looking to him for. But he said, God will send a strong delusion that they should what? Believe a lie. Do you mean that God will send something into my life to allow me to believe false doctrine? Isn't that what it says? That if I'm, if I'm out here trying to find a way to, to dilute, if I can use that word, the things of God after I've already known the truth, the Bible says there remaineth no more sacrifice, but it goes on to say this, that God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, verse 12, that they all might be what? Damned. Sent to hell. Lost. Who believe not in the truth, but had pleasure. Listen to this. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know what? We should have pleasure in the righteous things of God. Hey, you know what? You know, you, you, you date the same girl and marry the same girl and stay faithful with that girl. You know what? You don't have to worry about getting nasty diseases. You stay faithful to your spouse you don't have to worry about all this nonsense that's going on in this world today. That's just the way it is. Number two, it is a personal surrender to Him. So the first thing is a firm conviction pro producing that full acknowledgement of God's revelation and truth. Second thing is a personal surrender to Him. To Him. This isn't just a uh, head knowledge. This isn't just an, a mental ascent. This is a relationship. That's where faith goes to. It goes to a relationship. John 1 and 12. 
It goes to a relationship. It is a surrender. When we talk about surrender, it means I quit fighting. It's like that fish on the line. It just stops, and he gets wore out, and you just start doing this, and he just right up to the boat. Because a lot of times they'll, they'll come in, and once they see the boat, man, then it's a turn, and they're off. There comes a point when they're wore out. John 1 and 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be what? To become what? Sons of God. See, sons denotes relationship. I'm a son. My father, you know, he might not have liked everything that I did, but I was still his son. When I was a little boy, he, always, he wanted me to do things faster when I was a little boy. He had high expectations for me. And so sometimes he would call me Grandpa when I wasn't moving as fast as he thought I should. Come on, Grandpa. And I was like, whatever that means. Uh, it didn't bother me much. I, I don't know if he was trying to manipulate me or what, but it didn't bother me much. I, I, I can barely remember that. But you see, there is that surrender to him. As many as he received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In other words, there are rights that we have. There are, there are things that, that can't be disputed. They are, there's laws that are, that are surrounding it. And when we do that, you see, we have rights to call on the things of God by our faith. God, I've done this. You know what? When the children of Israel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped into the fiery furnace, they had some rights. When, when Daniel, when Daniel uh, went and prayed and he opened up his windows after the decree was made and they threw him down in the lion's den, you know what? He had some rights because his faith took him to another level. You see, our faith, Gives us rights with God. Amen. The third thing is, and we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. The third thing that it gives us is a conduct inspired by such surrender. In other words, all this stands in contrast to belief. Let's look at this. Do you have uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7? There it is. For we walk not... By sight. We don't walk by sight, but how do we walk? We walk by faith, believing that God is going to be there and knowing and trusting. Why? Based on relationship. Never, lo never dropped me yet. So it, it all stands in contrast to belief in its Purely natural exercises, in other words, which consists of an opinion held in good faith without necessary reference to its proof. Now, God is always doing something different, but I can guarantee you God is always up to something. And uh, things don't go our way sometimes. And maybe that's a good thing. You don't get that job. Maybe it's a good thing. You get that job, and then you wish... I wish I wouldn't have got that job. Certain things happen in life, and, and here we are, and we're wondering, you know, uh, we took a trip uh, recently, and I'll guarantee you it was not what I expected, not at all. And I was, I was actually rather disappointed. And I thought I had relationship with someone, but, but when I got there, it was like, who are you? I don't know you. And there I was, and I was like, Seriously? And I even brought a gift. And I was this close to walking away with my gift in my pocket. And come on, baby, let's go to Dairy Queen on the way home. <laughs> but you know, relationship though, we trust in God, we believe in God, and 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 it it's it's there. Now, my wife, sometimes I might come home late. From working at the church. She's not always really happy. And so she'll call. 
She'll give me a little buffer. What time are you coming? And she, I'll say, well, I'll be home about 2. She says, okay, it's going to take two hours. All right, I'll see you at 4. Because she says it always takes me double whatever time I says. Every once in a while, I like to surprise her. And so she'll, she'll wait until 3 or 3.30, and then she'll call. And it's like, oh, there's that phone. What time is it? And I look, and I'm like, oh, man, it took way longer than what I thought. It's because you get into stuff. All right, brother, pause. You get into stuff, and things don't always go the way you want them to go. We was uh, doing something over in the garage a few weeks ago, and, and uh, she thought, well, this won't take very long. And so, hey, won't you come help me? You know, you can go, and we can be there. Sure. And so when we started moving and digging and stuff out and moving around, it's like, and it was hot. And it's like, now do you understand why it takes longer sometimes? Yes, I do. I think even that day, Brother Shane and Brother Jaden came to our rescue and was helping move and stuff. And it still took a long time. You know, there is something about this faith thing. You know, we might think that, well, Jesus, you have tarried too long and you haven't come back for your church. There's part of the, the church right now that's crying out saying, God, give us just a little bit longer. There's some souls out there that need to be saved. Yes. But then there's another side of us says, God, I don't know if I can take any more. Why don't you just go ahead and come, Lord Jesus? You know, we, we look at all of these things and 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 it gets a hold of us sometimes. But we want as many people to be saved. We want as many people to come to to the saving faith that we know and that we understand to understand that the faith, even though it is a relationship to Jesus Christ, it then becomes part of our trust and our obedience to God and even our holy conduct to, to say what we will do and what we will not do. Amen. Faith is more, like I said, to, than just an assent. It's more than a, a dogma. You know what a dogma is, don't you? Dogma is, is something that people believe in a certain way. You know, uh, I don't want to just believe something just to be able to argue it. That's not what this is about. But this is about getting a hold of God and believing this, not just so I can prove that I'm right. But I believe what I believe because it's the Word of God. And that's where it's got to get to. Because I've seen lots of people argue. And I suppose there's been a bit of that in me in my life. And I remember one gentleman that I, that I talked to. And he, he wanted to talk philosophy. And he wanted to bring up all of these theologians and philosophers that, that had all kinds of ideas. But I could not nail. It was like trying to nail jello to the wall. You ever met somebody like that? Because I always want to bring something up. And when you, when you correctly go and define and exegete the Word of God and what a word means and, and what the Scripture is saying, and then somebody say, well, what about this? And they'll try and get you sidetracked on everything else. When you find somebody that just wants to argue, you know what? They're not fully cooked yet. It's like a dead man. We were pre I was preaching Sunday about, you know, being dead. If somebody... I've never, never heard of anybody that's being, been alive that's submitted to being embalmed. It just doesn't happen. Drain my blood out of me. It's not happening. You're not sticking that thing in me. Right? But dead, dead body don't really care. And so the Word of God can have its perfect work on us when we allow ourselves to die out to sin and to the things of the world. So as believers, it means trusting in Jesus Christ so much, no matter what he wants to do, no matter where he wants to lead. Uh, the one that just comes to my mind right now was, uh, who was it? Uh, Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. And here they are, and they've been ministering, and they've been doing uh, all these things. And this woman, this young girl's been following him. These men are the, the, the servants of the Most High. These servants are the Most High. What was was that spirit, because the Bible says it was a devil that was inside her. Was that devil right? Yeah. You know what? The devil can be right in what they say, but wrong in how they do it. 
And so Paul finally had had enough. This nagging spirit that was coming along, it was draining, draining and pulling down on him to the point where he finally turned around and he rebuked the spirit, cast out the devil. The girl was delivered and her peop the pers people that she worked for were unhappy. You know what? We ought to be happy whenever somebody comes to Jesus. Whenever somebody gets a deeper truth in their spirit. You know, I love it when we're in a service and, and worship is going on. And all of a sudden, somebody blares out a, almost like a war hoot. I'm telling you, revelation is happening. Somebody's spirit is being healed. Somebody is getting a hook, a faith hook in them, amen, that ain't coming out. You know what? We, we ought to have more of that. There ought, to be, there ought to be times that we come to church and we just want to say, I want something today. I want something today. I want something that'll, that'll turn me inside out. I want something that'll excite me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Trusting in Jesus. Obedience. Amen. Love. You know, I don't know, I can't think of anything else that Shadrach, you could have asked Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to go through than a fiery furnace, or, Lot, or Daniel through the lion's den, or David to face Goliath, all of these things, you know, we can read these things, and, and back to that Philippian jailer, you know, Paul and Silas, they did something good, and they got thrown in prison for it, they got thrown in jail, but God didn't leave them there. God wasn't done with them. Just know this. When things don't go your way, you don't get a good diagnosis. You don't get a, a good judgment and something that you don't get what you wanted. Let me just say here that God has got you set up for something better. Paul and Silas, not only did they, did they deliver the young girl, they also delivered the jailer. What about the rest of the people in the prison? What about the jailer's family? What about what God was doing? I'm telling you, God was doing something awesome. Amen. Could it be that, that we are right on, when things don't go on our way, that we are right on the heels of a spiritual earthquake in our life, that if we'll just hang on a little bit longer, God has got a miracle waiting for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember Brother Potts' testimony, I think it was last week or the week before. He said, God healed my kidneys once, and he can do it again. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's not a power in this world, amen, that can keep God, amen, from doing, hallelujah, what he wants to do. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're not talking about just feeling good tonight. We might feel feeling good just a byproduct. But when you trust God and you believe God and you follow him into trouble, I'm telling you, God will make a way and it will feel good when you do it. Yes, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I'm, I'm looking through some things here. So there's three components of saving faith. Saving faith has knowledge. It has a scent and it has appropriation. So to have faith in something, a, pers a person must first have a certain degree of knowledge. We got to understand what faith is. Last week I, I, I talked about it being a switch. It could have just as well have been a valve. You know, you walk in and, and, and you're going to wash your hands or you're going to do something at the sink and you turn that on. The right side's usually the cold and the left side's usually the hot. Sometimes plumbers get them backwards. And the left side's the, the cold and the right side's the hot. And, you know, sometimes you can turn on the, the cold thinking it's the, thinking it's the cold. And then all of a sudden, here comes the hot. And where it's really bad is when you're in a hurry and they have plumbed the shower backwards. And you've got that thing all set up to think, man, it's going to be a nice and toasty shower. And all of a sudden, you jump in, it's like, woohoo! That's usually a camp shower. <laughs> that's usually a camp shower but you know the more you can just turn on a little trickle and there you go that's what you got you know what you can't put a house that's burning down out with a with a little trickle of water you need a fire hose you know what i want my faith to be like a fire hose 
You got to get a wrench out. This ain't no little little deal like, you know, that you're using to wash your hands with in the restroom. We're talking about something that's big enough to put a fire out. Amen. So we got to have a knowledge, amen, that how God's power and his faith works in his lo- in our lives. We got to know, amen, what we possess and what we believe. Amen. I'll be finished here in just a moment. But saving faith does not require us to understand everything about God or life. We're not going to understand everything about God. You're not going to understand everything about life either. And I'm glad that God's got more power and he's got things that I don't understand about him. Because what that really means, and he has the ability to be God in my life. If I know as much as God, then I'm telling you there's a problem with God. A problem with me. Maybe I'm thinking more of myself than I should. But you know what? There's more about God than we'll ever know. Even we get, when we get to glory, there'll be more about God. We'll, we'll, we'll be with Him throughout the eons of time, trillions and trillions of years from now, and He'll just keep on surprising us and surprising us and surprising us. It's like the magician that just keeps pulling rabbits out of his hat. You keep looking, there ain't no rabbit in there. And he just keeps the rabbits. You know what? The magician, it's a trick. But with God, it's a miracle. Hallelujah. God just keeps pulling miracles out. Second, to have faith, there must be that assent or mental acceptance. That's what we mean by assent. We've got to accept it mentally. So just to know it doesn't, isn't enough. A person can have, understand a certain uh, element or proposition and yet disbelieve it. The Bible says that the devils, the demons, believe that there's one God. And they tremble. They don't accept it. They don't receive the power, amen, that can come to them. And so knowledge is not enough. Praise God. We've got to allow it to come into our life. We've got to accept it and say, yeah, amen, to me. Hallelujah. God, bring it on. I want it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that looks pretty hard, God. I don't know if I'm going to walk in there on my own. Maybe that's why they had somebody throw them in. I don't know. But finally, there must be an appropriation of what is believed. In other words, there must be a practical acceptance of truth. How do I, ex- how do I accept that? I pray. I pray the word. Amen. I believe. I follow the word. I trust that. That saving faith in Christ. It means that I pray every day. It means that I read my Bible so that I understand, so that I develop my relationship. You see, this word right here is more than just letters on a page. This is a lie. The Bible says, for the word of God is quick. That word quick means alive. It's alive and it's powerful. And so the more you read this, the more you get God in your life, the more power comes into your spirit, amen, the more belief, because your relationship is going stronger and stronger and stronger. We must make God's Word and the Holy Ghost a guiding principle in our lives. You see, the Word will always be there. It's our manual to understand how the Holy Ghost works in our life. How it works in our life. The Holy Ghost. Amen. I forget how that one. No, no man can say that Jesus is accursed by the Holy Ghost. I think that's how it goes. And so to be able to say that and to say things against Jesus, it can't be said by the Holy Ghost. Just because somebody gets excited and says, oh, yeah, 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 he died on a tree, you know, and, and, and to give all the bad things about You can't do that. It, the Bible tells us how it works because Jesus died once and for all for all of us. That's why we come to the Scripture where Paul said, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's why it's important that we understand there's only one God. Because if we don't understand there's one God, you know what? There's some things in relationship that we don't have in our faith. Because when we get God in our relationship, then we understand that it's not two people I'm dealing with, and it's not three people I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with one God. For there is one God and one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The Lord will come into your life. Amen. And he'll change you. 
Paul said it this way. I believe it's in the, is it the book of Ephesians. No. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. In other words, he said this, I don't want to just know him in the good times. I want to know him in the good times. I want to know him in the bad times. I want to know him in the all the times. Oh, let's clap our hands tonight. Hallelujah. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. Israel finally made it to the promised land. What's the Old Testament about? What is, what is Exodus about? It's about coming out. And then you get to the Levit Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And, 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 and here they are. They're trying to get to the promised land. What's in their way? Unbelief. Unfulfilled faith. Praise God. Well, let's stand tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. God, let your faith, let your glory dwell in us richly, Lord. Let your faith and your power, God, let it come in us, oh God. Let it stir us, oh Lord Jesus. Let it get a hold of us, God. Lord, that our lives may be changed, and God, that we may be committed, and Lord, that there's nothing that you can ask us to do, Lord, that will be too hard. God, we trust you. Lord, that's why we come and we pick up our cross daily, and we follow you. God, because we know, Lord, Lord, that this, this old cross that we're carrying isn't going to end up, amen, on a Mount Calvary, but it's going to end up Turn into gold one of these days. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's raise our hands one more time and just love him tonight. God, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy. God, the power to save us, Lord. The power to deliver us, Jesus. Oh, God, the power to keep us. Oh, to heal us, Lord. We're healed by faith, Lord, knowing, God, Lord, that you're able, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you would touch this church, God, that you would lift us up, and, God, that you would move in our spirits, Lord God, and that you would strengthen us. God, in all things in your word, in the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost, Lord, have free reign in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for being with us online if that was your venue tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for coming.